Welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel. This week, we're going to do something we haven't done in a while, build an adventure. So I had picked up a, well, I got a PDF version of the Sandbox Generator. A lot of people have been talking about this, especially on some of the podcasts I listen to and stuff. So I picked it up a couple weeks ago and thought, I'll look at it when I have a chance, but I wanted to grab it while it was in my mind. And then this morning, I was watching the Red Dice Diaries YouTube channel. I'll put a link to both of these things, by the way, in the uh, description. And they kind of did a walkthrough of it. And I was like, ooh, wizards and wizard towers. This I'm on board for. So I thought we would make a wizard tower. I have this <laughs> I have this love for the kind of quirkiness of OD&D and the way that when you're traveling through the wilderness, you can encounter these various like castles or strongholds. So I want to use that system combined with this sandbox generator. We'll make ourselves a tower and then we'll create some kind of it. So it'll be a location based adventure, if you will. And then we'll make some kind of quest. We'll see what happens. Let me just start by jumping into OD&D. So I'm on my iPad here and we see a couple of things. When we're in the wilderness, basically you've got a D6 of what the castle could be that you run into. I'm going to make it a tower. So I see there's two options here, wizard and necromancer. And uh, in <laughs> in OD&D, that's levels, I believe, nine uh, and then above, right? So nine is necromancer, then 10 for a wizard. And then you're just a wizard past that point. So the sandbox generator actually has a wizard creator, uh, but the levels are a little bit lower. So we're going to tweak that to make it work for us. Then we're going to go, then we're going to roll on this. We're going to see what kind of cool uh, supernatural guards they'll have, which you can see here. And then also we'll add a few more kind of people at the tower. And once we have kind of our cast of characters, as you will, we'll build the actual tower. So I'm going to jump back to the sandbox generator. Okay. So I'm on the wizard page. And as I said, they start at level seven. So I'll just add two to the level, whatever comes up here. So it's 2d6 roll. I got an eight. An eight would give me level nine. So we're talking level 11. Ooh, that's a pretty good wizard. Okay. So, and again, this other stuff is all flavor, but I'll take notes as I go and we'll kind of assemble this. Okay. So back over here, 11th level would make us dealing with a wizard. So the wizard has a, we're going to roll a D4 to see what else can go with them. Okay, I rolled a two here. A two under wizard is chimeras, and there's a D4 of them. Ooh, fun. One. Okay, so this 11th level wizard has one chimera as a supernatural kind of uh, guard, if you will. Then if we look over here, it says that there will be from two to 12 men with any fighting man, magic user, or cleric encountered in the wilderness. And of course, this is the wilderness. So we're going to have from... 2 to 12 additional people with them. They'll be from 1 to 4 level each, and they will be of the appropriate type. That is, they'll be magic users. Okay, 7. All right, cool. So our wizard, I'm going to take some notes over here. Okay, so we're going to check to see if they have anything special. Down here, a magic user has a 60% chance of a wand, 30% chance of a ring, and 20% of misc. So let's see. Wand. Oh, 60 exactly. So yes. Ring. Zero three, they have a ring as well. Misc magic, 67, no, okay. So they're gonna have two items. They're gonna have a magical wand or staff, I'll roll on that chart, and they'll have a ring. All right, now that we have the basics, right? Now, I'm, now is where I'm gonna use the sandbox generator. Let's create some interesting things about this wizard. Okay, so they have a specialty, it's a D12 roll. That's not really relevant per se in OD&D, but we can use it for flavor. I got a nine, looks like a invocation, okay. They have a general appearance of eight, formal attire, and five for long-term goal, which is lust for power. Well, there you go. You know, perhaps they dress in formal attire because they're often, maybe they're nobility. Maybe, maybe they're like an outcast nobility or they, they have some claim. Okay, so now they have a staff. So <laughs> these are always fun because we can use it even whether it's magical or not. I mean, they're going to have a wand or a staff anyway. So what I like about this, though, is that they've got a D10, a D20, a D8, a D... Oh, there's two D8s. Okay, well, bummer. I usually like these tables when they use all the dice. So you can just throw a handful of dice. I'll roll all of them, and I'll just do the second D8 after. Okay. So we've got the following. Material, the D10, 7. It is an otherworldly material. Number two on the D20, which is has a claw on the top. The first D8, which is the bottom, it has a six, which is same as the top. So, oh, claw on top and bottom. Interesting. And finally, the detail uh, three, it's decorated with feathers. Oh, well, I mean, that 
claw on top and bottom and feathers. I, I get a bird theme going on here. Let's uh, put those all in. Okay, I rolled the other D8 and I got twisted for the shape. So we have this twisted wand with claws on both sides, decorated with feathers, and it's of some strange otherworldly material. So this is pretty interesting. And they have a chimera as their kind of otherworldly companion. So we've got some interesting stuff going on here. All right, so finally, they have an example in the book, but we're not going to use that example because we made our own. So let's take a look at the tower. Okay, so the tower itself, we're going to roll through these different tables and then we can start to kind of put this together and get a little story going on. And maybe we'll throw a little extra flavor by using some random tables somewhere else as well. This is a pretty robust book, but it's really kind of inspiring. It doesn't have, at least as far as I can see, like deep, deep detail in a lot of these areas. So let's look. That's where our imagination comes in, right? All right, so we're going to determine a few things here. Uh, the number of levels, how many above ground and underground, basically, uh, the, how they're connected, uh, the outside appearance, and the shape. I'll roll all these, and then I'll come back and tell you. All right, we have the first part of the tower drawn up. There's four above ground levels, no underground levels. The, you use teleportation portals to move from level to level, so that could be fun. Uh, the exterior at least appears wooden. It, I mean, it says material used. We could make it something else, but it, it's wooden, and it's square. So that's, it's kind of fun, right? We've, now we have an idea. We're starting to get a picture in our head. So let's see what else we have here. On the next page, we start to get into details. So let's see. Oh, right. There's also the upper level. So basically the roof. There's D3 features up there. So there's going to be two of them. And we're going to roll for it. It's a D20. Nineteen and fifteen, we have statues, gargoyles, and flags. Okay. Okay. So we need an overall inside appearance. Extravagant. Well, that goes with the fine dressing, right? Uh, special equipment. Nine. Nothing. Okay. So now we're down to level usage. So this is where we're going to get into the meat of this, right? So we've got a uh, ground level. So the ground level, right, which is the first level, depending on where you are in the world. We would call that the first floor where I live, but some people call that ground level. All right, three, uh, it's a hallway. Okay, so when we enter, there's just going to be hallways. That could be interesting, actually. Seems a little odd to me that the ground level would be a hallway, but, you know, maybe when you go, maybe the tower's like set up above. You've probably seen towers like that where it's kind of just pillars and the whole thing's kind of up in the air and it's just kind of a, a passageway underneath. In fact, in the Hyborea campaign I ran, we had a tower like that, and then underneath was a glyph that allowed for teleportation. So this actually kind of ties in. It's very similar. All right, uh, let's go. So we have more levels here. We've got four of them. I'm just going to roll them all. Two is, okay, this is interesting now. So we have this raised up tower with the, the ground level just being hallway effectively, right? And then we've got four levels. The first one is a fortified room, which kind of makes sense, right? Because if you teleport into this place and the ground level is just hallways, this is going to be like a protective room. This is where the first room you teleport in. You're just like, okay, I'm in this tower. That's where the wizard would meet you. That kind of stuff, right? It's, it's a, basically a space where you can't mess with them, right? Protective. But what's interesting is the next two levels I rolled are both ruined. And then the one above that is unloading, which is perfect because that's the next one up is the actual roof. So this could actually be an abandoned tower at this point. So let's see what the roof is. 16 is a sage engine. So that's interesting. Some kind of a, a weapon up on top. You know, when we're looking at this, though, I might want to change this because I see a few different things here that might be better. Number one, an aviary, since we have this idea of this bird, right, idea. But I also see that there is uh, a monster nest, which we have the chimera. And I also see that there is ruined slash overgrown. You know, I feel like I'm going to do what I do when I run my solo game. I'm going to do an oracle. And I'm going to ask, I'm going to roll a black die and a white die. And I'm going to say, if the white die is, so yes or no, should I just pick one? If the white die is higher, I'll just pick one. If the black die is higher, I'll go with, uh, I'll go with Sage Engine. We'll figure it out. The black die is higher. It's a Sage Engine on the roof. Okay, cool. So this is very interesting to me. We'll have to figure out what's going on here. We've got our wizard. We have these other people with them. It seems like two of the levels are ruined. So possibly an experiment. Maybe they were raided. Maybe they're ruined because time's gone by. Okay, let's see if we can make something out of this madness. First, I'm going to jump on a donjon here for a second. And I'm going to get a 
random location, because sometimes that adds a little flavor, right? Sometimes words and just the way it phrases it's good. So I'm gonna come over here and refresh this page and I'm gonna roll a d10. Obviously it doesn't make sense, we'll just roll again. Uh, Rocky Island, okay. The sky is filled with howling winds and flashes of lightning. Perfect. So this is on an island. Now we can, this could obviously be like a long lost tower since we know we have some runes here, but um, let's see if there's another reason why they might want to be there. So I imagine this tower being kind of alone on this island. We've got this very powerful wizard with a chimera and multiple ruined levels. So something's going on that's ruining the levels, but that's the thing. I think that's the, the next step here in this adventure is why are the levels ruined? It would be simple enough just to make this an abandoned place, but we already know there's all these people here now. They could be in stasis, I suppose. They could be somehow trapped. But I think the idea that there's something going on here that's caused this ruination, maybe the magician has maybe uh, been possessed or something, right? They brought down some, some wrath of some kind of very powerful creature, and they are now kind of there in their tower with the, with the destruction. That All that being said, I don't know that I love this. And this is one of those things. When you're using these things, it, you can use it to force the story out of yourself and get creative, but sometimes it just doesn't work. So I think two of the four levels being ruined and another one being an unloading area, this isn't that interesting to me. So let's go back and re-roll those and see if we come up with something better. Okay, so we know this is on this rocky island. So we've got this place and we have these two ruined levels and that's not a whole lot to work with. So why don't we do this? Let's go back to our level usage and roll what it was used for before it was ruined. So I'm going to roll a d12. Okay, 12, I got storage room. And two, I have archives. That's very interesting. Okay, so again, this is one of those issues where you get with random stuff. I don't know that we would need a storage room and an unloading room. So if we're going to go with archives which is interesting. Maybe the wizard's somewhat retired. Maybe they're studying. And we have a storage room, which could have any number of things. Unloading room doesn't make sense, so I'm going to re-roll that one too. Armory. Okay. You know what? I'm just going to completely just pick something, which is what you should do in these cases. And I'm just going to say bedrooms, right? We have all these people here. They must live somewhere. So let's go back and look at our, our situation here. And again, they're still going to stay ruined. So we have fortified room, and then we're going to have a archives, archives that are ruined. And then we're going to have a storage room. Again, ruined. And then up on top, we, we got rid of this unloading room. And now the siege engine on tops makes sense because this is an armory. So this place actually seems to me like being on this island, perhaps this was an important place where they were blocking something. Maybe this rocky island sits inside some kind of a, a bay or cove, right? And it was used as a either a warning or a signaling place to hold back enemies at some point. And this wizard has taken it over, or perhaps they were always manning it. Maybe they, they man it with a wizard, right? Because they've got power. So now we have this thing. And I think what I want to do is figure out what exactly the party wants to do there. Like, why are they even going here? You could just put it in your world, tease it out, let the players come to it, but I'm kind of creating this as an adventure. So let's give them some kind of hook. Let's go back to Donjon. Actually, instead of going back to Donjon, I'm going to use this thing here, Random Sword and Sorcery Adventure Generator. This is great. It's by Ben Ball. I, it used to be available on the Hyperborea site. I don't know if it still is. If it is, I'll put a link. So this is great. And I'll, I love, too, that they use that... Uh, that, I believe that's a Darlene art piece. What a great piece. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to use this for part of it. So we need, we, let's, let's make a title. All right. Two, 12. So two is beast and 12 is of the deeps. Ooh, beast of the deeps. You know, naming your adventures and this kind of stuff really helps. Cool. Now we just need like a quest. We're not going to get into all of the, I mean, we could just fully use this, I suppose. Uh, mission. Here we go. Yeah, let's just use it. I don't know if I've used this before on this channel. 14. Uh, question. There's a, oh, person to be questioned. 19. Huh, thief. It's funny because in that same row is tower. 
So we're questioning a thief. That doesn't make sense. The one below that 18 is sorcerer, so that's who we're doing. We're questioning the wizard. Ooh, no. See? This is why sometimes this works. Okay, so we're questioning a thief that has now become a wizard's apprentice. Again, this is one of our apprentice people, probably the first level one. All right, let's see what we got here. The hook. Why is the party doing this? 17. Oh, read ancient scroll or tablet. Oh, well, that makes sense. So, all right, so now again, now we're going to go back. This is why somebody have to go back here and, and mess with this. So why would the thief be able to read the ancient scroll or tablet unless the wizard themselves is the thief? So, all right, so question of thief. Maybe this wizard stole it. All right. Okay, our antagonist is 18. Uh, oh, a torturer. I don't know if I like that. 13. Greedy merchant. Oh, that's interesting. The antagonist is a greedy merchant, but I, you know what? I actually, again, sometimes it's great to use these, sometimes it's not. I'm looking at the very first one is Angry Ghost, and I think I really like that. I think this wizard being out here on this remote island with lots of ruined areas, maybe there's an angry ghost here. All right, potential ally. We may or may not use these. 10, a priest who speaks for the gods. That's interesting. Or possibly somebody who can speak with the, the, the dead. I like that. All right, we got a complication of 19. Spurred lover looking. <laughs> Let's not do that. This is definitely sword and sorcery. 15. Uh, PC is mistaken for someone else. Well, that could be interesting if the ghost does, does that, but I don't think we need that. Obstacle, assassins, also interesting, and a twist. Antagonist is a PC from another time or reality. That's great. I've used that one before. Well, I like the idea of, of assassins as well, though. Okay, so we have something to work with here. Beast of the Deeps, questioning a thief, a decipher ancient scroll, angry ghost, priest who can speak with the dead. So I think what we could actually do here is... We could, we don't have to use all of this. I think the idea of, I love the title, first of all, and especially with the fact it's on an island. I like the idea that there's something going on and this wizard, we want to implore the wizard to help us, but they are being haunted basically by an angry ghost. And because of that, their tower and stuff is being destroyed. And when the PCs get there, sure, they'll, the wizard will help, but not unless they help them first. And that could very well be just a battle of, oh, you know what it could be? Let's do angry ghosts. And let's go with pirates. Okay, so because we had a thief earlier, right? So <laughs> this these pirates, right, they buried their treasure long ago, right? This is the deciphering ancient scroll. The Wizard, when he was younger, before he was a wizard, found this, used magic to, to unlock the scroll, figure out what the treasure was, and that's how they built their reputation in that tower. And now the pirates have, you know, somehow they perished, and somehow in the afterworld, they figured this out, and now they are haunting this wizard's tower. So basically, this wizard's tower is very remote, and it's being haunted by these pirate ships. But the problem is, the wizard's tower is... Basically, in, in you know, right in the Gulf of a river, and traffic needs to go down there. And these these pirates are raiding um, the uh, the ships that are coming through. And this priest who can speak with the dead has determined all this information. So the PCs now must go to the area and interact with this wizard and stop it somehow. Figure it out. Maybe the the wizard has to give back the money. Maybe they can join with the wizard. Maybe they can fight the ghosts. You know, that's up to the players to figure out. But basically, that's it. I'll write this up a little bit neater and uh, come right back. Okay, so this is what I've got so far as far as our adventure. And it's important to note that this is really just a location that we've created. We could do anything we want with it, but I thought it'd be fun to have this little adventure starter. Beast of the Deeps. A terrible scourge has fallen upon the port towns to the east. No boat has been able to enter the Great River for trade as a skeletal crew of ghastly pirates sinks every one. A priest of the Holy Voice has spoken with the ghosts in visions and found that the wizard, Nasunzo the outlaw, whose tower, a formal naval outpost, 
sits upon a rocky island in the Sea of Bight. Entrance to the Great River. Should be ga- gained his fortune. Okay, so I did, I just read it wrong. Nocenzo is a hermit and hostile to any who have attempted to land upon the island, driving them off with a sky filled with howling winds and flashes of lightning. So, again, we have this wizard here, and we hit his whole crew, and we have this island. Basically, the party needs to go there and negotiate. This would be a negotiation, a role-play mission. I mean, this is a high-level adventure, obviously. This wizard's powerful. I mean, you could send a mid- to low-level party here with the idea that they need to sneak in and <laughs> negotiate. But I'm thinking this is somewhere in the vicinity of, like, 6th to 8th level was probably where I would place it. You could be higher level, but I think then it would be almost too easy. So you got to balance that out. Let's do a couple more quick things here, though, just to wrap this up. I'm going to figure out what kind of wand he has. We know what it looks like and what kind of ring he has. I'll probably roll up some treasure for this eventually as well, but let's just uh, let's just do those things. OK, so let's see. OK, I'm in monsters and treasure here. It's a percentile roll. Let's see what he's got. It does say wand, but if I roll a staff that a wizard can use, I'll probably just allow that. Uh, 56 is a oh boy. Wand of Lightning Bolts. This is definitely a higher level adventure. And he also has a ring. Let's see. Percentile for the ring as well. 51. Delusion. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So a ring of delusion makes you think it's something else. So that could be very powerful, actually. If Remember I had said before, possibly the wizards become a little unstable. So this could actually work out perfectly. So Wand of Lightning Bolts. So again, the wizard being extravagant and having this luxury, but then having two of their main rooms destroyed, that could be the ghosts are messing with it. Maybe they've been tearing through their stuff, trying to figure out how to defeat these ghosts. And they've kind of come a little bit unstable, right? They have loyal people there with them, the lower level magic users, but they can't stop. So that could be a faction that you could use with the wizard. There's also going to be a chimera here. So that's probably going to be the first fight, right? When the party gets to the island, first they'll have to avoid the pirates, number one, obviously. And then if they can get to the island, the chimera is probably going to be an outside threat. Once they defeat the chimera, assuming they do, they could, they'll have to figure out how to get into the tower because it's all teleportations, which they could do from the roof, obviously, or they could do it from the ground. And we can go from there. If you want to set up, you know, magic mouths, wizard eyes, stuff like that all around. That's what I would do here. I'd love to know what you guys would do with something like this. I will flesh it out more, but what I have here uh, will, goes on my Patreon. So the anybody on the Patreon will get these notes so you can work on it. I will flesh this out eventually, though, and make it into a full-blown adventure. And I'll let everybody know on the channel when that's up. It'll probably go on drive through RPG. And I will actually work out all that stuff for myself. In any case, I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or comments, please do put them in the comments. Check the description below for my Discord server and my Patreon. And also, I'll put a link to the Sandbox Generator and also that Red Dice Diaries uh, video I was talking about. I'll talk to you soon.